be known that I never intended for this to be my comeback video, all right? I intended my comeback video to be a fun, Bible-themed adventure for the whole family, which is coming, so don't worry. But instead, I have to cover this dumpster fire. Now, there are spoilers for the first Last of Us game. <laughs> excuse me, the only Last of Us game in this video, but I'm assuming anybody who's clicked on this video has already played the first game and is already aware of the part two leaks that have gone on the internet in the past couple of days. If you're not, however, a quick 0.25 second long YouTube or Google search will get you caught up pretty quickly. The TLDR version is that Naughty Dog is a horrible company who treats their employees like shit and they're finally getting their comeuppance by ruining one of the most timeless and beloved video games of all time, making them an absolute laughing stock amongst the entire video game industry and internet. However, when emotions for such a masterpiece are running so very high, it's often difficult to express why exactly everyone is so pissed off, what with the agonized sobbing and blind anger and all. The most blatantly obvious problem with this game can be summed up in one simple word. Agenda. See, while most video games have a narrative or a plot, this game has an agenda, and it can all be traced back to this woman. Her name is Anita Sarkeesian, and she's the sort of feminist that makes actual feminists somehow wish they were men. If you already know about Anita Sarkeesian and the role that she's played in this festering zit on the face of humanity, then you can skip to this part of the video. Otherwise, let me give you a quick rundown. There are countless videos that can catch you up on all the stupid shit this woman has said and done, but basically all you need to know is she's a feminist blogger who has brought to light the misogynistic qualities found in video games. And, as with any feminist rhetoric, any disagreement of her shoehorned arguments are inevitably met with, well, you're just a hateful misogynistic man and anyone who disagrees with me is part of the patriarchy. For example, she often asserts that Laura Croft from Tomb Raider is a damsel in distress and a sex object because she wears a skimpy little outfit. Now, despite the fact that she's perfectly capable of handling guns, climbing cliffs, solving puzzles, and shooting bows and arrows, unfortunately, that skimpy little outfit means that she's a misogynistic sex symbol. You know, kind of like how when a woman chooses to wear a low-cut top to a bar, instantly she's a sex symbol. I mean, no, 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 I, <laughs> I did not that. I mean, that, that would be terrible. Um, I just meant that because she's conventionally attractive, we have to assume that she was created for the sole purpose of men to masturbate to. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 uh, not that either. Shit. Not to mention the fact that Laura Croft's original design was purposefully overly feminized to make it easy to tell she was a woman due to the limitations of a 32-bit console. There's only so much detail you can put into six polygons. In her modern games, she's dressed more realistically, such as wearing thick clothing and snowy levels, because with improved technology comes improved storytelling. Also, are we to assume that anybody who dresses like Laura Croft is automatically a sex object? I mean, I like running around in my tank top and shorts as much as the next guy. I mean, I don't look half as good, but fuck you, stop slut-shaming us. Don't get me wrong, misogyny is certainly found in some video games, because it's found in literally every form of media, but that's not what we're talking about here. Sarkeesian somehow manages to belittle strong female characters under the guise of pointing out misogynistic views that simply aren't there. It's like in her attempt to stay woke, she ends up doing the exact thing she's accusing others of. She even downplays Ellie's role in Last of Us, but we'll get to that later. Well, it turns out Neil Druckmann has a hell of a boner for our dear Skeezy, and her scathing critiques of Naughty Dog's previous depictions of female characters clearly had a pretty big impact on the direction he took with The Last of Us Part Two. If you want the full story on that, check out Geeks and Gamers' video, assuming that Naughty Dog hasn't taken it down again. Oh, and assuming that you can get past the filthy penis haver who talks during the video. Let's take a look at our two main characters in the first game. We have Joel, a grizzled, bitter man whose only child was killed in front of him at the beginning of the pandemic. A man with deep-seated extreme anger at the universe that ultimately leads him to choose his own selfish desires for Ellie to remain alive over the good of the entire human race, and indeed, Ellie's own wishes. Mankind took everything from Joel, and in turn, Joel takes everything away from mankind. Ellie, on the other hand, is a perfect foil to Joel. Ellie is a compassionate and gentle person, and has a genuine desire to put an end to mankind's suffering in a way that only she can. For all the suffering she's endured in her young life, the idea that she could provide a cure gives her a reason to keep going. 
She's also extremely perceptive and notices how truly anguished Joel is, to the point that she calls him out on it when he allows his rage to fully break through and is even shown to be a little wary of him at times. <laughs> Although they initially don't get along, Keeping Ellie alive and delivering her safely to the Fireflies gives Joel's life a purpose that he hasn't had for years, and that purpose is only solidified by the close bond they grow to share. But once that purpose is threatened, Joel lashes out, effectively taking away Ellie's choice and taking away her purpose in order to save his own. You, the player, are forced to kill the doctors fighting for humanity's last chance at survival and carry Ellie out of the hospital, even knowing full well that this isn't what she would have wanted. It ain't for you to decide. It's what she'd want. And you know it. Joel lies to Ellie and says that nothing could be done, finalizing her fears that their journey was indeed for nothing. The game's iconic ending is a testament to the layer of distrust Joel's actions leave Ellie with. She's powerless to do anything to change what happened, and her purpose was stolen from her by the one person who has grown to love her most, the only person she thought she could trust. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. There are a plethora of really interesting directions that they could take this relationship in for the sequel. It's some years later, and Ellie's a young woman now. How has their relationship changed in all that time? Does Ellie resent Joel for what he's taken away from her? Does she become disillusioned and bitter because all of her hope's been taken away? Does he feel bad for what he's done to Ellie? Do they ever confront each other about it? How do they deal with the further apocalypse? That's my purse! I don't know you! Yup, in the blink of an eye, the entire story of the first game becomes obsolete! No more Joel and Ellie relationship, because who the hell cared about that anyway? Every magnificent, heartfelt moment of the first game is rendered narratively useless, all at the hands of this random bitch! Forget about the fact that Joel has taken down countless zombies and humans, and even as a somewhat older man has the build of a fucking lumberjack, all of a sudden he's easily taken down by the power of vagina and a golf club. Go fuck yourself. This bitch comes out of absolutely nowhere, looking as though she's been taking testosterone supplements and swallowing creatine powder six times a day in the fucking apocalypse when no one has enough food, and single-handedly takes down one of the most beloved video game characters of all time. And he just lays there like a bitch. And just like that, every Last of Us fan ever felt utterly betrayed and completely lost interest. So the plot of this game has absolutely nothing to do with Joel and Ellie, but actually introduces a fucking religious cult full of straight people who don't like the gays. Oh, and all the religious straight people are immune to the virus, so that really just takes the final shit on Ellie's face. Guess that whole last hope for humanity thing turned out to be a bust. Also, you get to play as this unlikable bitch who killed Joel for half the game. And herein lies the problem. Even if she hadn't killed Joel in the most insulting and unrealistic way possible, I don't care about this character. Nobody cares. I don't care about her history, or that she has this vendetta because her daddy died, or that she has like some relationship with Ellie down the road. I don't care. Nobody cares. This is not the last of us. This is not what we signed up for. This is not what we waited seven years for. I have an idea. Let's remake the first game, but instead of following Joel and Ellie, we follow the trials and tribulations of the army guy who shot Joel's daughter in the first scene. Isn't that a more compelling narrative? This is what happens when people push an equality message just to pander to the social justice warriors. And before you guys call me like a transphobe or a homophobe, whatever you want to call me in the comments, please let me explain. Literally everybody suffers from this decision. 
The creation of this character is apparently meant to represent transgender or non-binary people, but it does the exact opposite of everything that it sets out to do. It makes people who are genuinely bigoted against transgender people think that they have a reason to be bigoted. It gives people who maybe don't have much of an opinion on transgender people a reason to think that they're associated with this shitty agenda, and it makes transgendered people feel like everybody hates them just for the way that they are, and not because of this bad storytelling. I would be, like, genuinely offended if I was a transgender person and this is how I was being portrayed. And as somebody who actually gives a shit about fair representation, I demand better for them. Let's not forget what started this turd ball rolling down the hill. Listen to this quote from Neil Druckmann talking about how Anita Sarkeesian's videos had an impact on him when he was writing characters for Uncharted 4. When I'm introducing and describing a new character to our lead character concept artist, constantly she'll ask, what if it was a girl? And I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Let me think, does that affect or change anything? No? Cool, that's different. Yeah, let's do it. Wow, a female character, that's cool and different! Oh, a non-binary person, that's cool and different. How do people not realize that having a gay character be the gay character for the sake of having them be the gay character is insulting rather than inclusive? What if it was a woman? Who fucking cares? Make your characters interesting. As a woman, I'm always pissed when people play the what if it was a woman or what if they were gay card. Uh, gee, Becky, I don't know. Maybe a character's merit should come from what they bring to the story rather than what demographic they're trying to pander to. I'm looking at you, Last Jedi. Not to mention, I can't believe I have to state the obvious here, but it's the zombie apocalypse. Who the hell cares if you're gay? Not to mention, in the first game, the pandemic begins in 2013, so it's not as though being gay was that societally unusual to begin with. Glee was one of the most popular shows on fucking television, for God's sakes. The fucking world is falling apart, and this is what y'all are worried about? Why is everything stupid? And we really don't need this forced, women are so powerful that even Joel was defeated by one all-female cast bullshit. It's very transparently done not for the story, but so that the game devs can show how woke they are. And here's the thing, Ellie is already a strong female character. Her story arc in the first game literally already ends with a man taking away her choice. Which brings me back to Anita Sarkeesian not knowing a strong female character if it hit her over the head with a golf club. In Left Behind, the wonderful add-on for The Last of Us, Ellie's companion Riley is not someone players can issue orders to or someone they have to protect. Riley is constantly active, often taking control of the situation, sometimes competing and being playful with Ellie, and as a result, she doesn't feel anything like the companion characters in most games, or even anything like Ellie herself felt in the original game. Instead, she feels much more like a real person accompanying Ellie on the journey. No. Actually, fuck you. Ellie was never a sidekick character. She is the crux of the entire story. She's the good to balance out Joel's bad. She is a relatable young person who struggles with naivete while also growing stronger as she's forced to adapt to her dangerous surroundings. She starts off not even having a gun and then ends up saving Joel's life. Twice! She strives after a specific goal that only she can achieve and is tragically kept from doing so. She has a wide range of genuine emotions that never once feel forced or phoned in, and without her there is literally no story. Most importantly, the helplessness she feels at the end of the game has very little, if anything, to do with her gender and everything to do with the fact that she's a young person under the care of an adult who ultimately makes the decision for her. Ellie. What? Tell them that... Ellie is the little girl. I broke your fucking finger! Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. You know what? No. How about, hey, Ellie, I, I know it wasn't easy, but it was either him or me. Thanks for saving my ass. You got anything like that for me, Joel? Yup, no interesting or strong female characters to be seen. You absolute clod. And why does Ellie's sexuality have to play such a huge role in the game to begin with? Am I the only one who thinks it's more representative of real life when a character trait is subtly hinted at rather than shouted from the rooftops? Look me in the eyes and tell me what my thoughts, dreams, and motivations as a character are. What, are you having trouble focusing? 
A few examples of subtle character development that come to mind are Nat from Bob's Burgers and Zhang from Duncanville. Animated shows are the best, fuck off. Nat casually mentions having an ex-girlfriend and then takes the Belchers to visit her, and rather than having it be a whole deal where the kids learn about what being gay is or whatever, it's just never questioned. The entire point is, yeah, she's gay, so what? Nat has already been shown in like three episodes up until this point, so by the time we casually learn that she's gay, she's already been a developed character, and no one really bats an eye at it. You know, kind of like how it would be in real life if somebody that you knew came out as gay. The same can be said for Jing in Duncanville. Her entire family is white, and she's obviously adopted, but this is literally never mentioned. Yeah, she's adopted, so what? The fact that these attributes aren't explicitly discussed not only normalizes said attributes, but also ensures that the characters aren't defined by them. We easily could have left Ellie's sexuality as an intriguing suggestion, or maybe a subtle plot point that would gradually develop with the underlying story, but instead we bashed the audience over the head with a golf club, RuPaul Drag Race style, and said, GAY! Oh baby, not my gay ass. It fails at everything that it sets out to do. And in an attempt to make it more inclusive to women and LGBTQ people, it makes us look like fools who don't know how to tell a good story. Thanks. Even Troy Baker, Joel's voice actor, warned us that this was going to be a shit show. Quote, I don't know whether people are going to like it or they're going to hate it, but they definitely will not be ambivalent about it. End quote. Ha! <laughs> kind of reminds me of Peter Dinklage right before the Game of Thrones finale. They ended it brilliantly. Better than I could have imagined. And uh, you people are in for it. <laughs> Hilarious. I especially love Naughty Dog's response to all of this, from Neil Druckmann's posting a Kurt Cobain quote on Facebook in a fuck you, you're just transphobic attempt to imply our reasons for hating this game are anything but valid, to them literally copywriting anyone who even talks about the leaks online regardless of if they use footage. That's definitely gonna help the fucking terrible reputation this game already has. This game is a joke. You took a fantastic, one-of-a-kind story beloved by millions, ruined the possibility of ever continuing the narrative, and then canonically nullified everything that made the first game so good. And now you get to watch it crash and burn. I mean, the game's not even out for two more months, and it's already dead. But the real Last of Us is a true classic, a true marvel of what video games can do, evoking emotions that couldn't be possible with any other form of media. The real Last of Us will be revered for decades, while this absolute insult to the fans will fade away as a forgotten meme. Now we just have to wait to see how long it takes for them to copyright this video. Maybe it's time we wrote stories instead of agendas, huh? So yeah, my grandfather's trans, I'm gay, so I'm pretty much like the demographic that they might be pandering to. And even I think that the story they've conjured up is just abysmal. It's disgusting. It's it's like, what what even is this? If you make me play as this Abby chick and kill Ellie, which is what they're saying, Ellie dies. So you're killing the two main characters who you said that this series would be nothing without. I've even heard Neil Druckmann say it himself that The Last of Us is Ellie and Joel. Okay, so you can't. Bring in this character that's from a no-name person that you killed when you killed hundreds of people in the first game and make it like this means something, okay? I used to love Neil Druckmann, okay? I used to think he was great. I was like, wow, he's finally bringing some diversity that's not too in your face and, like, thrown at you down your throats. Because Ellie being gay with Riley was great. That's fantastic, okay? Like, that, I had no problem with any of that. It's, it's normal. You need to be have these kind of representations in the game. But when you're just thinking of how much diversity can you throw into one story, how much just pandering SJW bullshit you can throw into one place, that's not a good story. That's like you just taking, like, a pot, a cauldron, and just mixing all of the bullshit that you think should be represented into one game? No, you need to be subtle about these things to make it tasteful.